going to make a French apple tart. I'm going to start by making the dough for the tart. Usually when we make pastry dough, we tell you to keep everything really cold. So this is a little variance from that. This is room temperature, soft butter we're using. So in my bowl here, my mixing bowl, I have one and a third cups of all-purpose flour. I'm going to add about a half a teaspoon of regular salt. And then I'm going to add one egg yolk. One stick of that room temperature butter. I've also got some cold water waiting. So I'm going to mix this up. I don't know how much I'm going to need. Maybe three tablespoons of cold water? We'll see. I'll start out by putting in two. And then we'll see. Now what we're going to do is when this dough is done, we're going to wrap it and refrigerate it for at least a half an hour. So that'll bring the butter back to its cold state. A little bit more. Try another teaspoon. That's enough. You can see it's very soft. So I have here a piece of plastic wrap. Take the dough off. You can see it's, it's really soft. This French, I call it a French apple tart. There are so many variances of French apple tarts. Um, this one happens to use something called frangipani on the base. You put the tart dough in the tart pan and then you make a mixture of ground almonds and you make it into a paste and pour that on the bottom or spread it on the bottom. Then you put the apples on top of it and bake it. You can also make French apple tarts that are just apples and, and spices, or they can be a custard base with apples. I'm making this one with almonds because I happen to think that almonds and apples go beautifully together. I love almonds. And frangipani is nothing more than French term for almond paste. So, make this into a disc. It'll just make it easier to roll it out later. We will wrap it up. Like that. And it's almost easier to make it into a disc after it's wrapped up. Okay, there's our disc of dough into the refrigerator for at least a half an hour until it gets firm and cool. So, into the refrigerator. While the dough is cooling in the refrigerator, I'm going to make the frangipani filling I was telling you about, which is nothing more than almond paste. I'm going to start out with one stick or half a cup of room softened butter. And I'm gonna cream that on my machine with a half a cup of white sugar. it gets nice and fluffy. Now, the other ingredients that we have here are one egg and one egg yolk, two thirds of a cup of ground almonds, one tablespoon of, I have apple juice here. The recipe calls, the traditional French recipe calls for apple brandy, but I don't have any, so I'm gonna use apple juice and two tablespoons of regular flour. I'm going to add the flour to the almonds and mix those together. And the butter's looking good. I'm going to take it off and as I like to do, scrape down the sides. So everything's going to get mixed together well. This time I will add the apple juice. I will add the egg and one egg yolk. And the two thirds of a cup of almonds and the two tablespoons of flour. that up well. And that's all there is to the frangipani filling. 
When this is blended well, I'm just going to put it in a bowl and put it to the side. It can stay at room temperature while you're waiting for your dough to chill and everything. It does not have to be refrigerated at this point. As a matter of fact, you don't want to refrigerate it because if the butter started hardening up, it would be very hard to spread it on the tart shell later and that wouldn't be good. Okay. Here we go. Here is our frangipani filling. I like that word, frangipani. You can see it's paste-like, but it's not pasty. Very fluffy and soft. And there we go. I'll put this aside, and after we roll out our tart shell, I'll bring it back and I'll show you what we're going to do with it. Here's our dough that's been in the refrigerator for about a half an hour. It's slightly cool, it's a little firmer, but it's not hard as a rock. Let me talk about the pan for a moment. Um, this is a nine and a half inch diameter tart pan. And um, it has a removable bottom. And this is what we're gonna use for our tart today. You can use square ones, you can use long ones. Um, if you don't have one of these, can I suggest that if you're going to be doing an awful lot of baking, buy yourself one or two different pans every year. It won't cost you that much. This was $12 in a very high end uh, food store. Uh, that I bought a few weeks ago, and it's just a nice pan. So I'm going to put this pan on a cookie sheet that I have lined with aluminum foil so that even if I have a little bit of an accident and something leaks out, at least I'm not cleaning my whole oven. Okay, so we're going to flour our board, unwrap our dough. I didn't throw that on the floor. I have a waste paper basket there. No. All right, now we're gonna to try to roll it into a disc that's going to fit into this pan. there. Not to worry. Just means I didn't put enough flour all over my pen. By the way, this is a French rolling pin. Um, you can probably find it just about anywhere. I like it better than the ones with the handles. I think I get better. More control. Okay, that's plenty big. So I'm gonna pick up this dough, roll it up on my pan. We'll put our dough in our pan, fit it in there. You can see it's nice and flaky. It's already wants to fall off. Okay, we'll just fit it in there. Into the Edges. You can do patching here if you have to. Rolling pin. Turn off all the excess dough. Your thumbs. Fit it in there. Little piece job there. There is our dough. Now I'm going to dock it. I'm going to take a, a fork and make all of these little prick marks in it. You do that so that when you put this in the oven, the dough doesn't dome in the middle. Now, done this. Before we go any further, we are now going to put this shell into the refrigerator again, at least for another half an hour. You want this really cold. If you do that, it won't shrink as much in the oven when you bake it. But, so we're going to put this in the refrigerator and I'll be back to show you how we continue. 
Well, here's our pie shell all cooled from the refrigerator. And here's our frangipani. And I'm going to take it, put it on the pie shell. Spread it out. I love these little offset spatulas. Another one of those little tools you should have. Makes life very easy, especially when you're doing something like this. A bit more of that. I wasn't sure if I could fit it all in there. Yep, all gonna go in there. And this is gonna get nice and set and puffy. Almost like a custard, but not quite. All right, now. I've pre-sliced some apples. Um, use a sweeter apple. Don't use something like a Granny Smith in this recipe. You want, this is some galas or galas I've had left over. So what I'm going to do now, and this is, takes a while and depends on how much you want to fuss with it. I actually had very small apples, so my slices aren't that big. But I'm just going to lay them down, overlapping all the way around. And as I said, it's going to take a while. Here's our tart. It was in a 400 degree oven for 15 minutes. I came back, turned the temperature down to 350 and left it in for 10 minutes. Now we're taking it out. You can see how it's starting to brown around the edges and I'm going to put some sugar on it and that'll help caramelize the top. Now I'm using vanilla sugar and it's vanilla sugar. You can buy it like this because it has pieces of vanilla bean in it, which is smell is just unbelievable. You can, if you don't have vanilla sugar, you can just use regular granulated sugar. But I've got it, so I'm going to use it. And tablespoon, tablespoon maybe, tablespoon and a half. Just enough to give that top a nice crunch and caramel. Now, the oven is still on at 350 degrees, and I'm going to put this back in for another 10 minutes, and then we'll see what it looks like when it comes out. Here's our French apple tart out of the oven. It's very hot. So we're going to let this cool down to room temperature before we can take it out of the pan and cut it. So we'll be back then. Well, tart's been cooling for about an hour. I went out shopping, as you can see, I've changed. I'm going to unmold it now. This is what I love about this tart pan. It comes right up. My hands are a little greasy buttery this is. Now, cut it. There we go. I'm going to get a cup of coffee, a fork, and I'm all set for the afternoon. 